Hey guys, Bada Bing here, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be putting the GHK M4 up against VFC's HK416 A5. Two gas blowback rifles, but which one should you choose? Hook yourself up with a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and let's find out. The GHK M4 was released back in 2014 and fires from GHK's own produced 40 round capacity magazines. They also have different types to choose from. The rifle uses a gas system very loosely based on the Western Arms M4, and has enjoyed overwhelming success since its inception. So much so that it is the benchmark in which all other M4 gas blowback rifles are judged. The VFC HK416A5 was released in Europe in early 2017, and at the time of making, it's just showed up in Asia. It fires from VFC's 35 round capacity magazines, and available in various types. All the internals are based on the Western Arms type system, and the rifle is a result of many years of refinement that has stemmed from the M4 GBBR line. Kicking off the comparison, let's begin with the individual rifle features. The GHK is your standard Colt M4 SOP mod style carbine, so feature-wise, it's as basic as it gets. The OG front iron side post, nice rail system, and LE stock just screams old hat nowadays. Personally, I dig it but I know that some users will be soon swapping out parts for something a bit more up to date. Included with this rifle is the GHK Enhanced Rear Backup Iron Sight with rail extension. I find this next to useless as an accessory and have opted for a low profile flip up instead. The hop up adjustment is located under the lower rail panel, an awkward location for the hop up, but as I said earlier the GHK borrows from Western Arms and they are identical in this respect. The HK416 has all the wonderful features we'd find on the A5 variant. Every component is tailored for righties and lefties. You've got ambi everything. Along with the A5 advancements, you're looking at the extended quad rail handguard with integrated flip-up iron sight, enlarged trigger guard, enhanced charging handle, version 7 HK grip, QD rear backup iron sight, ambidextrous rear sling point, and slim line stock, all set to the magnificent hallmarks of h &K goodness. On the business end, VFC have their patented hop of adjustment system, cleverly designed as the adjustable gas block. Next, the build quality. Aside from the very slight play between the upper and lower on the M4, and a quite frankly unnoticeable movement on the stock, the rest of the carbine is totally sound. The rail, outer barrel and buffer tube are tight and solid. The takedown pins here are easy to remove by hand, and they didn't have a break-in period that some gas M4s do. If you see my review on the HK416, you may remember that I had serious barrel wobble issues. Something they just didn't get right on the EU release, nor was it something that I actually found a fix for. A friend of mine that supplied me with the upgrades to the VFC HK417 gas blowback rifle I once owned sent me a custom made barrel stabiliser that completely eliminated the problem. It followed the internal geometry of the rail system to lock the barrel in place, and bingo, no wobble. Unfortunately, it isn't commercially available at this time, but I'll post a link in the description when I know where to get it. As far as I know, the Asia release have cured this issue. Other than that, the build quality is borderline too good. The rail system, upper to lower receiver, and stock are all rock solid. Sadly, this has a negative effect on the takedown pins. You'd end up ripping your fingernails off if you tried to pry the rear pin out. Owning the rifle for a while now, with regular takedowns, hasn't done much to wear the removal of the rear pin. Every time, it requires tapping out. So far so good when it comes to the build quality, how about the functions and handling? The functions on the M4 have a decent tactile feel. The selector switch isn't smooth, quite gritty in fact, but it has that reassuring stiffness that isn't going to get knocked off position easily. As this M4 is the latest version too, its bolt carrier has a smoother feel than before and creates a silky shooting experience. With the bolt locked to the rear, the bolt catch really has a good bite on the bolt. The bolt catch requires a good shove to return the working parts, rather than a simple push of the thumb. The dust cover is very positive and closes shut perfectly. The same cannot be said for the HK416. It doesn't lock into place, or if it does, even a slight breeze will open it again. The selector switch is quite light, but positive. 
You can flick it onto fire with ease, and despite its light selections, it's not flimsy. The surface of the bolt carrier is also smooth, and drawing back the working parts has a silky feel. The charging handle is a little flimsy, and as the buffer spring is stiffer than the M4s, it's a noticeably heavier pull. Finish. Moving on to the finish, and what's immediately obvious is the HK416 looks better, which is typical of VFC. It has a matte black finish and a fine rough texture. The M4 has a rather cheap looking black paint finish, which is smooth to the touch, but by the looks of it, it's lathered on. You get a generous coating of the paint, and it makes the edges of what's usually a sharp flat top rail soft and rounded off. It really is something you can see, and when you see it, you cannot unsee it. There is a big advantage to this though. With the thick paint, it'll take a lot to put a scratch that'll expose the bare metal. In the process of using this rifle, I took a small but fairly deep chip into the lower. No shiny metal lurking underneath, just a chip in the paint. The HK416 doesn't fare too well in the finished durability. The coating is very thin, and even when mounting an optic for the very first time, it immediately exposed the shiny metal. Trademarks is something that both of these contenders have, the M4 having the traditional Colt M4 trademarks courtesy of Cybergun. The deep engravings allows room for the thick paint, it doesn't look too bad. The Umarex licensed H&K trades look pristine and sharp. This is something VFC does best, and this replica really does look best out of the two. Internals. The guts of the M4 are made from steel. Everything within the lower fire control group is steel, and during its original prototype stages, GHK extensively tested these internals to breaking point until they were finally satisfied. For example, the development of the hammer saw five iterations before the sixth was created and chosen. The internals are quite simple in design and lacks all the little fiddly bits its rival has. As you know, the simple designs are quite often the most reliable and best, ensuring that it's as durable as possible before unleashing their M4 to the world. Like the first version, the second generation bolt carry is steel also, with a hardened steel insert to meet with the version 2 bolt catch. The evolution of their design has created a 100% reliable bolt lock. During my time with it, it's never failed me. Inside the GHK carrier hides a one joule nozzle, which outputs a high score of 350 FPS with point twos. As this is the case with GHK nozzles, they're produced according to the user requirements. High flow, one joule, low flow nozzles are available, as well as an FGS soft FPS adjustable nozzle. Basically, it's a GHK nozzle with a thread tapped into the bolt lux and a grub screw to increase or reduce the gas flow. Their hop-up chamber is made of plastic and accepts AEG spec inner barrels and buckings. The adjustment is stiff, which is a good indication that it's not going anywhere under the recoil. The downside to this is the fact that it's a plastic chamber, so getting a feed jam will likely break something. The HK416 internals are a little different than GHK's, however are still an expansion upon Western Arms design. The internals are mostly steel. The trigger is a kind of alloy, but everything else is constructed of some decent steel. What I don't like about this array of parts is the valve lock assembly. It's also complicated and awkward to work with. Tiny springs which are easily unclipped, and this piece right here I especially hate. As the rifle fires it causes the grub screw to loosen underneath the bolt catch, and after tightening down, the weirdest thing happened. Pulling the trigger wouldn't activate the striker to fire the shot. Seems it requires just a tiny bit of slack on the screw to ensure its operation. GHK's got you beat here, VFC. Keep it simple, stupid. The HK bolt carrier isn't steel. Only one or two areas, including the bolt catch engagement point. The nozzle that lives inside is the version 3 and features an FPS adjustability via an Allen key inserted in the front. This is exceptionally handy. The hop-up system, as I've mentioned before, is a clever design. It doesn't rely on the wa style adjustment, and VFC have created a gas block adjustment design. While it is a neat method of adjustment, it does have its flaws. The adjustment axle is plastic, and can have minor burrs left over from manufacturing, so calibrating can be frustrating. Exert a little bit too much pressure when turning, 
and you will break off the end of the plastic axle, as I did. <laughs> Time to email VFC support. The hop-up chamber has another major weakness, but I'll get into that later. Magazines. The great thing about GHK is the amount of magazines available for their M4 and G5. Included among their green gas variants is their CO2 magazine, making this M4 completely CO2 ready. So that's basically the international sign for winterproof. The weight of the older version 2 design Stanags, CO2 and G5 were on the heavier side. Thankfully, GHK have listened to feedback and come up with new improved lightweight Stanag steel magazines and, to the delight of many M4 users, P-Mags. Which, by the way, are just a bit lighter than the new steel mags. Overall, the performance of the GHK mags are excellent, but i found if left without gas inside for any length of time, the next time you come to fill them, they leak. Common thing with GHK mags. Top tip, never leave them empty. I've maintained a seal for years on GHK and, well, all my gas mags, simply by leaving them with gas inside. At least three seconds worth and it should be fine. Furthermore, users have reported issues with cracked feed lips, but preventable measures can be taken by simply filing a millimetre or so. I've never had such problems, but I'll leave a link to the Gas Blowback Archives video, which covers this. The VFC416 magazines are the Gen 2 type, and are said to be more efficient than the previous version. Along with being an accurate representation of HK's high reliability magazine, it's also very light as well. Unfortunately, I've had issues with successfully locking my bolt back when empty, but that is a saga I've already covered in my HK416A5 bolt lock issue video. So, both magazines are stated to be gas efficient, so how far will they go on one charge of propane? I insert 10 seconds into both magazines and begin testing the miles per gallon. The GHK shot 185 BBs to a 10 second fill. The VFC HK416 was hot on its heels of the GHK and fired 182 BBs. GHK wins this round. Just. Recoil. Both of these rifles have excellent recoil for off-the-shelf toy guns. Both bolt carriers weigh about the same, but where they differ is in the recoil spring and buffers. The GHK buffer is the lighter of the two at 88 grams, and the VFC is 94 grams. So this indicates the VFC having a tad stronger recoil, and essentially a faster return of the bolt due to the stiffer recoil spring. Is it a difference you can feel? Yes, of course, but it's only a fraction heavier. The triggers. Now this is where it pays off when you're using the more realistic type gas rifles. The triggers are excellent. The GHK is on the verge of madness. It sweeps up to the wall and snaps over effortlessly with a reset that feels numb as you roll back forward. It's a light operation that you can spam the heck out of and if you relax your grip, letting the recoil wash over your hand, it'll bump fire on semi-auto. If the M4 trigger is a young metal head on speed, the HK416 trigger is a grown-up and feels very German, something VFC have captured the very essence of. It's a short and heavier pull to an obviously sharp wall, with the reset that sucks your finger back out with a clunk under the heavier spring tension. Accuracy. This is a subject I couldn't wait to compare. Filming the first round of accuracy tests a while ago, I had to see how the groupings looked between the two rifles. Aiming at a single point on paper at 20 meters, letting the rounds hit wherever they hit. The Airsoft Surgeon 3s scored a mediocre result for the GHK, hitting all over the paper and much of the flyers hitting above and around the paper. The HK416 printed a tight little group with only a handful of flyers off the paper. This is the best grouping I've shot with this rifle, and for its initial head-to-head -head shootout, it's done very, very well.
After a couple of weeks of shooting in the snow with both carbines, I returned to punch some holes again to see if I can repeat the same performance from the 416 and perhaps give the M4 another shot for redemption. When I began popping off shots with the 416, I noticed that the hop-up was completely off. Thinking the recoil had something to do with it, I tried increasing the hop-up, but it just wouldn't take effect. It was only when I disassembled when I realised the gravity of the situation. There was a pin that was attached to one half of the hop-up chamber that kept the arm in place. Well, it was attached. It completely snapped off and rendered the rifle useless. For some reason, VFC decided to use this style of design, and what a totally stupid move. Their other gas blowback rifle hop-up chambers feature a steel pin that's positioned right through the chamber, so why change it here? Wonderful, yet another email to the VFC support. To this day, I'm still waiting for the replacement. I patched up the hop-up chamber so I can complete the following series of accuracy tests, and this is the best I could come up with. The GHK M4 returned to shoot this impressive grouping, using the same ammo as before, however the BB struck the paper in a pattern that made it look like the test was performed in a vacuum. <laughs> I had roughly six flyers off target, but the majority of them found their way to create this neat grouping. At their best, the accuracy between the two, surprisingly similar. Cold weather tests. Throughout the stages of putting this video together, we had a few snowfalls. Perfect chance to test out the cold weather performance of these two rifles. It's a little sluggish, but it still works. Okay, this is the, the latest GHK M4 magazine, the lightweight version, green gas. Um, I left it on the snow for roughly 10 minutes, so it's freezing cold. Um, let's just see how this will do uh, with the cold temperatures. Not as fast as before. Cleared the magazine, no problem. Okay. Now we got this. It's going to be useless because VFC gas perfect rifles and stuff, they're not known for their amazing cold weather performance, but um, this is their 416 magazine. Uh, it's just been buried in snow and it is absolutely freezing. Um, I'm just going to see how well it works. No, not well, not well. This is just with regular propane, so it's it's not anything sort of powerful or anything that they get it through the cold. Woo. My gloves this thing is freezing. Stop picking up the BBs whatsoever. But between this and a GHK. GHK's got a beat for cold weather performance. Oh, my hands are cold. Should have worn my ski gloves, right? This 
So we will about the cold. At least the BBs are still going straight. Let's warm this up between my legs, shall we? I'm actually just getting over the flu. What am I doing out here? The M4 has a better resistance to the elements than the HK416, even using propane. It also has the CO2 support, which enables the platform to survive winter without the need to incubate the magazines in pockets. Fully auto. Obviously during the winter using fully automatic is out of the question, but in favourable conditions, the mark of a decent GBBR is if it can empty a magazine on auto without running out of gas or experiencing severe cooldown. Emptying the 40 rounds from the M4 is no sweat, although the rhythm does slow down for the final 10 shots. Time and time again, it clears the magazine in the same fashion. With CO2, it shreds the contents in more of a consistent rate. The HK416 is no different. It zaps through the 30 rounds no problem. So the two aren't super high speed full auto guns, however they have it in them to do so if called upon. The GHK M4 versus the VFC HK416 A5. So which one is best? For the time being, let's ignore the attributes the HK416 has in terms of operator controls such as the ambidextrous features and simply focus on the individual systems themselves. The GHK M4, with its renowned reputation, has good build quality, with an acceptable fit and finish. While the receiver finish isn't as pretty as its opponent, it is, at least, durable. As standard, it features a dark grey steel outer barrel with the 5.56mm NATO stampings. This looks excellent and adds a nice weight to the rifle. The gas system itself is efficient, very reliable, and a recoil which is a joy to feel. The GHK M4 platform is also well catered with aftermarket parts such as bolt carriers, hop-up chambers, heavy buffers, lightweight buffers, various strength recoil springs, triggers, barrel extensions, stock assemblies, and let's not forget, it's an M4. It's a Lego gun, hangards, rails, sky's the limit. As mentioned before, it uses AEG spec inner barrels and buckings which are extremely plentiful, so you could easily upgrade if the bedded inaccuracy isn't to your standards. Remember that GHK offers a number of options when it comes to magazines and fuel sources, green gas and any other fuel up to the heavy duty power of CO2. Feed the M4 with your choice of propellant and BBs and it'll eat it, and then ask for more. The Umarex licensed VFC HK416A5 has a truly beautiful finish, although not exactly durable. The build quality and general feel of the rifle is solid and well balanced. Throughout my time running the rifle, it's always maintained a good shooting performance, apart from the broken hop-up chamber. The recoil being one of its ultimate characteristics. Despite the heavy recoil, the heavy spring creates a brilliant snap and this enhances the shooting experience. It shoots like it's loving every moment. The operating system, while a little complicated and quirky, it hasn't let me down. On the contrary, it's fed and fired every single round I've dropped the bolt onto, so clearly the beating heart of the VFC HK416 is strong. Now, it doesn't have too many aftermarket upgrades at this time, apart from full steel bolt carriers and upgraded AMG high flow valves for the magazines. I imagine it won't be too long until the steel outer barrel sets make their way onto the market, and perhaps an alternative rail system. Other upgradable options would be the barrel and buckings, which are of course the VSR variety, and you'll have much to choose from in that regard. So, what's the bad news? The M4 isn't exactly pretty, but that's only relating to the receiver, which does feature some casting flaws here and there. Think of it as a 720p resolution. <laughs> I'd like it to be a little bit sharper and have a nicer finish perhaps, but I'm just nitpicking at this point really. The older gen magazines are heavy, carry six on your person and you're going to feel it in the morning. The mags are also very expensive, among the priciest of the gas blowback rifle mags for sure. 
Another annoying fact is that the magazine O-rings aren't very durable. I said earlier that the magazines will develop leaks if left without gas, and this causes me to be more on my guard when dealing with them than other gas magazines. Never leave them without gas and they'll be fine. The HK416A5 has had its share of catastrophe since I've owned it over the past 5 short months. When I first laid my hands on the rifle, the barrel wobble really did disappoint me. What was even more frustrating was the trouble I had getting the bolt lock to work. I spoke with a few A5 users and they were all experiencing the same problems I was. Barrel wobble and bolt lock. I got a few tips here and there until I finally got it to perform 95-ish percent of the time. Well, it was certainly better than zero like before. Link to my solution video is in the description. And then there's the headaches I had with the hop-up system. That plastic axle really ought to be made of metal, or at least have a smoother calibration. And then there's the broken hop-up chamber. Not even a day after I uploaded the photos of my broken hop-up chamber to my Facebook page and VFC miraculously announced their improved A5 hop-up chamber. Wow, thanks guys. Way to rub it in. All the HK416A5s from now on will feature those improvements. I've seen some retailers selling the A5 from £470 to £550 in the UK, those being the European version, like mine. You know, the GBBR which wasn't finished before leaving the factory. Asia having the improved final version after the poor boys and girls in the EU beta tested it for them. This isn't the first time that this has happened with products coming from VFC. For those that have been subscribed to me for long enough will remember the problems I had with the HK417, and all the other people that have purchased older gen guns only for them to be fixer-uppers. Just look at other brands like GHK. Their R&D stages happen inside the four walls of their workshops. Prototypes are tested and refined until it's reached its peak, and they created something the customer would love and trust. For example, at the 2018 IWA show, GHK's prototype 553 snapped its stock. Immediately, the engineers got to work and in a very short space of time, they released a video of one of their employees stood on the latest version of their prototype 553 stock, displaying its rugged durability. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have VFC. They released an expensive GBBR with a wobbly barrel for it to hop up and a bolt lock system which didn't work. Unacceptable. Most airsofters save up to buy their dream gun quite often over the course of many months or longer. Imagine how they would feel if they bought a product such as this and then have to unnecessarily search for ways to fix it, and then learn that his or her case is not an isolated incident. Some things on the A5 they got right, the look, the features, shootability, it's just the little avoidable mistakes and general company attitude towards its customers that have let it down. That's why I'd happily hand over my hard-earned cash and name the GHK M4 the winner in this comparison. While these two rifles are very similar when it comes to shooting impulses and basic cycling reliability, there is less to go wrong with the GHK. It's an easy system to get along with, and the thousands of players that populate the various Facebook groups cannot be wrong with their choice in adopting the GHK M4. It just works. Bonus thing I'd like to mention on top of the insane amount of upgrade support for the GHK system is the original spare parts are cheap, plentiful, oh, and can be ordered from various websites and be at your door within a few days. Thank you very much for watching the video, my friends. It's been an exciting journey putting this together. If you enjoyed it, show me the love by hitting the like, and if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe and be notified when my next video goes live? Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. For regular updates, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, facebook.com forward slash badabingpictures, and Instagram at badabingpictures. So until next time, take care of yourselves. Catch you in a bit.